Welcome to the Monday Morning Wake Up Call with your host, Carrie Ramage, managing broker at Remax Elite, and Heather Holiday, your social marketing nut. Good morning. Oh, we're Good morning. We're muted. <laughs> it, mute, it automatically mutes you as soon as the video starts. Oh, there that you happened, go. That happened to me the other day. Well, and then I need to mute it so I can turn it on so I can watch it so I can comment at the same time. So it's like I got multiple things going on. Um, <laughs> I, yeah. I should make a, a like maybe you muted yourself again. Um, uh, let's see. You get like five. Um, maybe we need extra five seconds on the intro video. So we need when we're at R four, we'll do some videos and photos and stuff like that, and I can add that into the mix. Oh, perfect! That'll be perfect. Then we can. I was hoping to do a fun like photo shoot, just with the two of us, because I mean I'm using the one photo that I absolutely love from I think it was like that camera at one of the Scar events when we did the Secret Agent. Yes, that was when we did, when we did the Secret Agent class, which was awesome. And I just I don't I don't want it to be so professional. I really liked the funness of the and the faces because that's just. <laughs> I mean, everybody's always saying we're kind of the Carrie and Heather show all by ourselves. So <laughs> it just seemed appropriate. So I didn't want it to be so professional. I just wanted, I like the fun, but so good morning, everybody. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're, you're, you're as Remax elite too. Oh, I think you're everywhere. Yeah, I'm everywhere. <laughs> I don't know how to, oh, here I can un Remax elite me. There we go. Yeah, I know that gets confusing. <laughs> Trying yeah. to do too many things there. I know exactly. So, <laughs> so today, it's I think a good, a great show uh, because it's starting. You know, with the craziness again, I see all the the lottos, and it just brings back so many memories of when the new can. But really, what it, there's no inventory. So no. it's almost easier just to go for new construction. But now that's everybody else is saying the same thing. So. And, well, and there's no inventory in new construction. So when they used to have spec homes, um, they're not doing that. Well, I don't want to say they're not doing them anymore. They're, they're not so doing them because they're so far out that pulling permits and, and all the rest of it. And it's funny. I have a couple of people under contract with new construction and one of my buyers who's my investor. So, I mean, he's in the real estate game. He gets it, but he's like, my wife is like, why haven't they started our build yet? I said, because they told you it was going to be 12 months and we signed the contract a month ago. They're not going to clear the lot for at least six more months. I have people who went under contract in July and they just cleared the lot in February. The home will be ready in July or August. And it's all, well, a lot of it has to do with permit pulling. So, and anything that they had in inventory is just gone or it's going quickly. So I, I had another one last week where both me and my buyers saw uh, the, the guy we work with at DR Horton post in the Palm Bay, just the Palm Bay community group, you know, new construction, ready to close, five bedroom, three bath, blah, 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 blah. He posted it at like 5.30 at night. He didn't bring the buyer, but by 5.45, it was already under contract. I mean, it, it's just nuts oh. yeah I mean, it wasn't this crazy and what was that oh five oh six i i think it was a different type of crazy in oh five oh six but i don't think an inventory was down then but it was not down in the way that we're seeing it now and it's funny i shared an article on my uh linkedin about the reasons why you know why is there such a scarcity in the inventory and is it and is it just because of the pandemic? And um, well, here, whoever just said noticing all prices going up on new construction too, that home that I'm talking about was under contract with a buyer for $285,000, I believe. And it went under contract with the new buyers for 320. That's the difference six months in a build will make right now. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, but back to, uh, I lost track. Oh, so 
now um, it's not just because of the pandemic and certainly people are, don't want people in their houses or they don't want to make a move or they're worried if I list my house, I won't find some place to go. But the interest rates being so low and the interest rates are low. I mean, to think that we think four and a half or five percent interest rate is high now <laughs> is insane, right? I just but hear all the stories of my grandmother, you know, I mean, retired agent and you know, back in the eighties, like I got 13% and it was like, yes, you know, so I love to tell the story. When we moved to Florida from New York, it was, uh, the summer of 1980 and my parents were building with general development corporation in Palm Bay. For those of you local GDC corporation, my, my father helped build those houses in, in the seventies when he was going to FIT. Yeah. So my, we lived in a hotel for six weeks and I thought, because my father told me the house wasn't ready. It wasn't because the house wasn't ready. It was because my father was refusing to pay 21% interest rate in 1980, 21%. Can you imagine that? Yeah. And so when we finally did close and it was on my mother's birthday, which is October 16th. And we moved here Labor Day weekend that year. Um, he paid uh, 17 and three quarter percent was the interest rate. Can you believe, can you believe? So, when we talk about four and a half or five being high, that's ins insane. Or when I bought my first home, my interest rate was uh, six and three quarters percent. Um, still not high, but with an interest rate that in many cases is below 3%, you have so many more people being able to afford more home. That is, it's it's a ripe time to buy. It's almost like free money. I mean, yeah. it's crazy. I, my first house was 8% and that was, I mean, for my first home, that was like, insanely good and no points and whatever. I don't even know. You know <laughs> right. Right. I don't know, but it was like, like, wow, you did good. You know, it was our first home. I think that was in 99 or 2000 or something like that. But I mean, that was like such a good deal at 8%. And then I remember it going down to six and it's like, is it worth refinancing? You know, the fees, like how long are we going to live here? Is it, does it make sense? And now it's, I mean, even getting cars at 1%, it's like free money. It's right, like, right. It's why, would you, why would you use your cash when you can get what, like what you're saying, free money for sure, free money yeah. for sure. So, so everybody's looking towards new construction and we're lucky because we live in an area that has a lot of new construction, right? I mean, we still have tons and tons of undeveloped land here, which is great. Um, so the first suggestion we would make is join join a home builder association, join the national association of home builders, um, or your local, uh, home builder association, which is HBCA of Brevard, which is a great way of networking with the builders. <clears throat> and, you know, you may know who the builders are. You may know DR Horton or Miranda or Vieira or Christopher Burton or lifestyles, um, who are, you know, some, of the builders doing a lot of the work here in Brevard, but it's also good to, to know a sales rep and know which communities that sales rep uh, is working in. You know, uh, just cause then I'll just text my guy or my gals, which depending on which builder it is, you know, what do you have? Is there anything? Can you at least do something for me to hold it, you know, for a day, we'll be there tomorrow. Um, but building those relationships with, with, with the, the home builder association, by going to their events, that's where you're going to meet and greet and you're going to talk. You get to know them on a, on a completely separate level, even though, yes, it's like a networking event, but you get all the, the, the latest news, the scoops. And, and, you know, as you're sitting with them, you, the conversations are totally different than when you're bringing someone into the, you know, to a model. So Correct. that's, that is huge. That is key. You are so right. It's, it's, you know, when you're bringing someone into a model, it's not, you know, you, you're not really able to chat and get the skinny on what's going in necessarily, what's going on. So by joining those associations, and the Home Builders Association um, of Brevard here uh, is, is a really healthy association. They do a lot of community events. They do giving back. And it's fairly inexpensive to join. Uh, we are members as a as a company and then underneath us, each agent can join for a reduced fee. Uh, but if you're not doing that and you're really wanting to get in on knowing what's going on and rubbing elbows with, with the people in the new construction industry, that is a super great resource. 
For yeah. sure. I know, um, you know, with the home builders, I have one of my friends in uh, Pennsylvania and she's really big new construction. I mean, that's basically one of her things, new construction specialist. She does uh, almost like home, new home buyer seminars at all the local builders. So she's, oh, wow. you know, she brings people in, they have, you know, all the title, the mortgage and really go over every aspect of buying new construction. So she's done that for years, which really, I think, puts her in a good space for right now. Right. Um, you know, I mean, of course, been doing it for, for years, but she has that good relationship. You know, she's been promoting all of these, you know, new construction, you know, neighborhoods and whatnot. So, of course, they, you know, appreciate that. And I think that really helps with I mean, that's different. I don't know many people who are doing anything like that, but I know that something she does like all summer long and she'll do it one every single month right. at a different neighborhood with different builders. That's all. That's an awesome idea. Honestly, that that's an awesome idea. I mean, we, we have agents in our office that are spotlight spotlighting communities through video, but, but not to the extent that you're talking about. Sorry, I'm wearing my glasses today, which I normally don't wear for the video, but I got to clean them because I can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> I think all of that, uh, you know, I think the video is amazing because then it goes on YouTube and search engine, put it on your website, but also having a page on your website to have all the different new construction places and information and content, you know, that I think that helps you stand out as a new construction. So who's in there? Who's in there with you? That was Lisey. So, um, so many of you know that um, Darlene, our, our branch manager for our Indy Atlantic office, her husband got a new kidney uh, two weeks ago and she's out today uh, because he's still in the hospital or he's back in the hospital. And Peggy, who normally uh, works the front desk here, the branch manager for this office is in Indy Atlantic. Lisey's watching the front desk and I'm talking too loud. <laughs> she's like can you turn your volume up any louder I'm like I don't yeah know. That, you know what that's why i got my she shed because <laughs> my family said the same thing oh my gosh mom you're so loud <laughs> normally i have my door shut when i'm doing this but i had it open so i can listen to see if anybody comes in but lisi came up so <laughs> so so the next is keep yourself educated keep yourself educated on what's going on in the new construction industry and you know not just not just to know what's going on in new construction but whatever the trends are in new construction trickles down to renovation so if you have a resale even you want to know what are they putting? Are they doing granite? Are they doing quartz? Are they doing, you know, are, hey, is the new trend for mica? I mean, who knows, you know? So what are they doing in the new construction homes that you would want to incorporate or, or help counsel your sellers on to what they should be doing on renovations in their home? Um, I have a problem when I go to, it's, you know, going to new construction, you know, the different homes, the model homes, it's, it's as bad as spending a, a day on Pinterest. Right. It's like you go in there and it's like, oh my gosh, like they're so beautiful. And but exactly what you said to see what kind what are what are the new trends? Because that does yeah. fall into and it gives you great articles for you know, like blogs or content to be able to share because it adds value. Like here's the latest and this is where you can get it, or do you, you know, do I whatever. So I think I like that part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and 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 it and it um, you there are, there are new home uh, conferences. There's always an event in Orlando, the new home. Uh, I don't know what they call it, but uh, new home builder conference, which you could go to and walk the floor and see what the trends are. If you are a, an ABR, uh, a, an accredited buyer's representative, they have a segment on new home specialist. Um, so any way you can educate yourself is it it's not just helpful for the, for the new home, uh, for the new home, whatever, you know what I'm saying? You, you can, <laughs> I don't know. You know right. what I'm saying? You can use that information also with your resale and helping to counsel your sellers on what, what they should be doing. I take pictures all the time when I'm in them, when I see something that I love and it's funny ship lap. I don't know how long ago that was four or five years ago, three or four years ago, they started doing ship lap here in Brevard County and models 
And now I almost feel, and I ha still haven't done it in the room I want to do it in. And now I almost feel like, okay, well, that trend's over. So now I got to go back to the models, take some new pictures and see what's going on. And I'm the same way. Like I want that, but to do it right. I'm like, I'm always on the very tail end. I know. Anytime, by the time I get to the renovation, I'm doing something and then it changes within a year. It's all like super dated. And that's just apparently how I roll. Cause that's just what happens. But I'm the same thing. Like for this wall, I really wanted to do that. But because I have beautiful flooring that kind of has a bunch of different tones, I thought, I'm not sure. Let me get the floor in and a solid color because I right. thought it may be too busy. But, it, you know, in my mind, when I was designing this little space, that was what I wanted. But again, that's funny. How much money do I want to spend on a shed? Right. True. I, well, and I'm thinking by the time I finally redo my 1986 kitchen, Formica might be back in and I won't need to redo the cabinets or the countertops. Uh, you know? I don't know. <laughs> we had an 80s kitchen and yeah, I don't think you can go wrong no matter what you choose to do. <laughs> so true. So true. But it's like, to me, it's, it's overwhelming because I need to redo the flooring too. And uh, I need to do a lot. I feel like I keep saying to myself, one summer, I'm going to do a beach rental for three months, and I'm going to put all my stuff in a pod and redo my house. But that never happens either, because summer comes and goes, and here I am still with my 1980s. Well, you know, this year was a little different, so. Well, true, true. <laughs> so, and also, get to know your local build builders. They are another great source of, of, of education. Um <clears throat> And that's through like the events that we mentioned, whether you want, I mean, definitely anytime there's a new neighborhood, usually they're constantly sending this information, you know, check out the new neighborhood. I don't know if they're doing that as much because of how crazy the market is. They but have you need to be proactive right? to go and tour the different floor plans, the different homes and, and really become educated so that, I mean, especially in a market like right now, if you know that that's, that's huge. I mean, that's just, Real estate 101 is to know the communities, but I mean, new home construction, that's, that, that can be really big with your business, especially if yeah. you're looking to be a, a new home specialist. Right. So, well, and they've taken to texting now. So a lot of the builders are now texting when they have uh, new communities available and new floor planning available. So if you've registered with some of these builders, you'll be getting those texts. Um, but it's, yeah, know who the local builders are in your area. Uh, we have so many here and every day new ones are popping up. Um, I can remember, God, I, I don't remember five years ago, maybe, maybe a little bit more price family homes. I sold my very first price family home. Mary Maniscalco is delivering my hard boiled eggs for this morning. Thanks. Mary. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I remember selling my first price family home. And um, and you remember that because it was with Paula, and you know Paula, and uh, yes, listing love my Paula. And now they have a whole. Um, They've got a couple of different. Oh, yeah. I mean, they have a model center. They weren't doing that, so I mean, you've seen them grow, and they're an amazing builder. And and but now, and he still still kind of works there. So last time we were here, we got to go into the model center, and the same thing, like. Oh, you know, looking to get floors. So we're like going through everything they have. <laughs> like, which one do I like? Right. And so, well, but so now you probably noticed driving up and down Emerson, there are these builders you've never even heard of that have popped up. So make sure, even if you don't do a lot in an area, you know, Brevard County is a long, narrow area. Make sure you're just kind of at least so that if your buyer says, oh, <clears throat> what do you think about XYZ Builder? You at least don't say, never heard of them. I mean, you could at least say, oh, you know what? They're a new builder that popped up. I I just saw their model. Let me see what I can find out or whatever, you know. Um, I mean, I think it's also a good idea to go into them and get the get the information. Make yourself a book. Right. I mean, I'm, I'm like the kind of the anal organizer. So I have like a three ring binder and I can actually, you know, like in school and have the little tabs for each builder. And then you have the different information, the floor plans, all that. So if you have all that information, it's super easy to just kind of flip over, know the different floor plans, the different neighborhoods. And, and also when you're in there, you can talk to them and. And then you can make a connection with one of the builder reps, you know, and, and again, so then that's what I do is if I'm with a buyer, you know, and I'll just text them 
and say, hey, Michelle, do you have a 4-3, this many square feet, this price range, floor plan? And she'll go, oh, yes, it's the whatever. Or, or um, you know, I'll text Stephanie, the same thing. Do you have this? What do you have? And and they're always quick to respond once you've made that relationship, you know? Right. Once you uh, have a rapport with them. Uh, it's funny, I texted one of my guys and I said, do you guys have anything that fits this need? My guy is very particular about what he wants. And uh, my guy texted me back. We have this in this community. It's not where I sell, but but another guy sells there. Um, and I was like, okay, well, just give me the address. We're not going to stop in the model center because really all I want to do is see the lot and see if it's situated for my buyer. So we go, we drive in the neighborhood, and all I can think is the builder's rep must have seen us drive by, and he must have, you know, I think my car probably screams realtor car, realtor car. <laughs> and, um, so we drive around, we find the house with the lot, we're walking around the lot looking, and then I try the back slider, and the black slider was unlocked. So we go in, <laughs> so we could go in and see if this might be the the right floor plan. Well, within five minutes, the builder's rep comes through the front door and he's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, <laughs> not that I didn't want to talk to him, but we didn't have time to sit and go through the whole schmooze fest. And I said, we're just looking to see if this works for my guy. We will come see you if it does, blah, 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 blah. It didn't work for my guy. And I didn't want to waste anybody's time, you know? So... <laughs> <laughs> so funny crazy. But, but yeah I know the price points for your people know who's building where um, there's so many builders now that have upped their game you know they're building a, a product that has upgrades that they didn't have before or you know so if you're con the builders are constantly evolving just like the whole real estate industry is is constantly evolving and so knowing what they're doing you know this builder never used to include granite and now they're including granite i mean it's it's crazy um yeah and what kelly said about no new no inventory i mean if you're putting a new home under contract now uh, the, it, you're looking at a year's time before it's ready unless it's already being built so you also the other thing building the rapport with these with these um builders reps when a buyer falls out of contract for whatever reason they put it under contract a year ago and now they don't have a job so they can't get a mortgage so you know now that home's available you want to be the first person they text when it comes up or when the lots open up uh but i think both kelly and carolyn smith were out in viera this week uh, or last week, rather, waiting to get a lot. And they're only releasing five at a time. And they have parking spots where you could park, you know, a day, two, three in advance, stay overnight. Because if you leave, just parking your car isn't good enough. You have to be with your car. So if you're not in your car, you lose your spot. So, but I know both Kelly and Carolyn were doing that last week or the week before, I believe, out at Vieira Builders. I mean, it's nuts. I remember... This was years ago. This must have been 2003 or four out in uh, Vieira East in uh, Wingate Estates when I remember it was in the Vieira Voice at, because of one of my friends was in the picture where you were camped out. They were camped out in their lawn chairs waiting for the new lots to be released. I, I remember that. I was working with Paula at the time when it was just like ridiculous just trying to win the lotto to to have the chance and yeah so like the whole lottery thing but yeah I, I mean I remember that way back way back I mean I was working with Paula at the time so I mean that was before Remax so I know, I know. Remax was 2006 so, so I, it's crazy to see that kind of stuff happen again so when we say they're doing oh that's good so when we say they're doing lottery it means we have five lots, say, uh, they're releasing, and I, I would suspect them they're saying, um, okay, put your hat in, your name in the hat, and you have until maybe Tuesday to put your name in the hat, and then I guess they're picking the five names. But that stinks because I have the worst luck ever. <laughs> I guess I would probably have, like, Candace, who seems to have, like, the best luck best ever. Best luck in the world, yep. <laughs> so I just have to 
Candace, just put your name in, but really it's for me because I don't have any good luck, but she does. <laughs> right, right. That's true. That's true. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I can't imagine leaving your fate to a lottery. I, 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 that's just, just amazing to me. So, I mean, so that sort of adds to the, 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 the low inventory. Does a seller want to sell their home, potentially be homeless, put their hat, your name in the hat, for a lottery and then not win then what you know i mean, I mean it's got to be so stressful yeah yeah so stressful right now for for everyone i know of a resale a last weekend i believe it was because i think somebody called me on saturday to ask me for a question a question about it um i don't remember what day of the week this house went on the market they had 40 showings in the first day she put them for every 15 minutes and I've had time now to think about how I would have handled that. And I think you just handle it as like one big open house. You, the agent just goes there and you camp out from nine until six and you just let agents and their buyers come through, but you never know if yours is going to be that hot one, you know, that everybody wants, you know, I mean, but it's just, it's just, it's crazy. It's crazy. It is crazy. And one of the builders, <clears throat> if you have a home to sell contingency, so the market's crazy, right? So they're taking a year to build, but my sellers don't want to be out of their house and homeless, right? So they have a home to sell contingency. And ideally, you'd put the house on the market two months before the new construction is finished. Um, you get it under contract usually within a week, and then you try to do a, a very close closing. I've done it many, many times. Some of the builders are passing over the home to sell contingency buyers and, and starting the build on the buyers that don't have a home to sell contingency. So that's a whole nother hurdle. So my sellers who were their buyers, <clears throat> we ended up putting their home on the market much sooner than we would have wanted. Of course we get multiple offers right away. And thankfully um, the people that bought the home are actually renting it back to my sellers until they close on their new home, which will be in August. But the problem with that is, is in this case, their mortgage was $785 a month. <laughs> Not the same for renting. And now they're going to be paying a reduced rent amount because this house could rent for more than what I'm going to tell you, but the reduced rent amount of $1,400 a month. So because they're, they want their house to be started to be built they had to get rid of their home to sell contingency. Oh my God. Can you yeah. yeah. I mean, rent is crazy. It's insane. It's, it's insane. It's insane. So, so just to kind of recap, join, join the home builders associate, the national home, Build, national association of home builders, which is the national <laughs> the HBCA of Brevard home builders and construction. I don't, I don't remember what the C stands for. HBCA of Brevard <laughs> and, and network with builders. Make sure you're staying educated in the industry as a whole, as well as locally. Get to know the local builders. Get, get to know a local builder rep that you can have on speed dial on your phone and learn the communities and learn where they're going so that when you get the call that somebody wants to do new construction, you're not scrambling. I mean, I just go on websites <clears throat> weekly just to see if they've started a new neighborhood or what's happening um, there. You know, I know there's a new neighborhood in Vieira that which they haven't really put out much information, but there was an article in Florida today about it. So then of course I call my contact at Vieira and he's like, we're not really putting that information out there. I'm like, well, buddy, too late. Cause it was in, uh, <laughs> it was in Florida today. And the article in Florida today really had more to do with how many permits they were requesting and how big this community was going to be. Um, but uh yeah so at least again i had i have ian on speed dial over at vr builders and i just yeah. text him or email him and say what's happening give me the skinny you know so that at least i have an educated response to for my buyers um so yeah so that's it learn keep yourself educated in new homes um what's the uh weekly activity for this week Oh, wait. So here's just a question. When builders aren't building specs anymore in a neighborhood, but we'll build a home for you, is it more expensive? It's not necessarily more expensive, but this is what I have found. When you build it from scratch, you're going to 
pay for every upgrade you probably do. When there's a spec, they put limited upgrades in it. And if it hasn't sold by a certain time, you they'll, they'll sometimes reduce the price by the upgrade amount. They will never sell for below the base price. And the reason why is they have an obligation to the community and the people who have already bought there to hold uh, the appraisal prices. So if they start discounting, it'll be an appraisal problem. And the guy next door who bought it for more money is going to be knocking on their front door going, why did you sell it to Jimmy next door? Yes. <laughs> right. So, so if they are doing specs, there's limited upgrades or what they usually do is they put in their best, most requested upgrades. And then if it doesn't sell by a certain time, so now the house is going to be ready or is ready. You can usually get a discount off the upgrades. So, gotcha. and when you're sitting in the model center doing your own upgrades, people get a little crazy sometimes and they start up super more. easy to do uh, when you see things side by side. It's, and you see it in the model home because usually those will be kind of, Oh, it's always the best of the best. I right. remember one so time super hard. And it's like, well, we're going to live here forever. You know, let's, let's do it. Cause I love this. Right. Well, I remember one time my buyers went to a new home construction and thankfully they told the, the rep that they were working with me and they were looking at the home and, and he calls me and he says, why didn't you show us this home? This is in our price range. And I said, I said, well, let's, let me, you know, let's go, over, let's go back over there and talk to the builder rep. And um, so we're standing in the model and the model, I, I'm just going to pick numbers. The model was this floor plan is base price of $500,000. And then I looked at the sales rep and I said, I don't think my people asked you this. How much is this model as it sits here today? <laughs> $635,000 because it had every upgrade. I mean, it had a whole bump out, which gave it a whole extra game room. It had all sorts of ceiling treatments. It had the upgraded kitchen. It had, you know, whatever. Yeah, it was $130,000 more. And then I looked at them and I said, and that is why I did not show you this neighborhood because I know you would want all these things that are in this house. <laughs> that does not fit your budget. So anyway. Um, oh, there, there's your answer. There's your answer. Thank you. Thank you. What does this thing mean? <laughs> That's Anna. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I can could, I could never remember the, the C part. Home builders and contractors is what I, right? <laughs> Home builders and construction is what I was thinking. And I knew that couldn't be right. And it's like, as soon as you get that word stuck in your head, you can't like think out right. what it is. Right. Exactly. That's why well, I was, there's a word I was trying to say last week and I just can't, kept say arbitrary, arbitrary. I still can't say it had to do with arbitration. I still can't say arbitrable, arbitrable. I can't. <laughs> yeah. So, all right, weekly activity. <laughs> if you experience fear or anxiety or something this week, stop, breathe, for those of our friends out there who have a breathe necklace, and ask yourself, why am I feeling this way? And is there any real danger in moving forward? And if not, take that step in the right direction to the path and see where it follows you. And I think that's the we all stand in our own way many times. So always, I always just say, take a step back, take a breath, clear your mind and then move forward. Yep. And that kind of goes with, I love this words of wisdom and it's fear has two meanings. Forget everything and run or face everything and rise. Exactly. And there you go. Yours. I really loved that a lot. Yeah. yeah, for sure. For sure. And doing new things is always, is always scary, but that's where the magic happens. Yeah, that is the truth. The magic happens. <laughs> um, so that's it for this week. We have another show next week and then we'll be taking off because we'll be in Orlando for the Remax convention. I can't so believe like, that's coming up so quickly. Wow. It's like three. Well, maybe we have two shows. There's two more shows. Yeah. <laughs> the calendar, two more shows. <laughs> all my memories are. And I'm like, gosh, I hate that. <laughs> But that's it. So that's it for this week. We'll see you next week. Until then, wake up, kick ass, and repeat. Bye, guys.